Good afternoon, everybody. So we are ready to start. Thank you very much for joining our SPORE API webinar. My colleague Adrian will uh, walk you through the presentation. Uh, just a few housekeeping notes before we start. Uh, as you are aware, this session will be recorded. So if you do not agree with this, uh, you are free to leave the session. Uh, the recording will be published on EMA YouTube channel in about 60 days. Unfortunately, it takes that long. Uh, for questions, uh, we would use the Slido. Uh, you can see the uh, event code and passcode uh, in a footnote. You may remain anonymous while using Slido. Uh, the questions in chat here will not be monitored, so my colleagues will be attending Slido for your questions. And uh, I think uh, we are ready to start. Uh, one more one more thing: if you have in any technical technical difficulties uh, with this webinar, uh, for example, you cannot see the slides or cannot hear us, please try to rejoin the webinar. Uh, otherwise, I will put the email uh, where you can uh, get the technical help in the chat. So, welcome again, and hope you enjoy the session. I give word to my colleague Adrian. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Adrian Postano. I am the Spore Platform Manager for EMMA. And welcome to our um, third webinar on the Spore uh, API registration and um, usage. Without further delay, we can start the um, presentation. Uh, the agenda for today is um, now shown on the screen. We will um, start by discussing uh, how to request access to the Spore API. We will go through the workflow. Um, I will provide you with information on where to get help and support. Uh, and after that, we will get to the more technical part of the presentation. We're going to talk about uh, API resources, concepts. Um, I will uh, have an, uh, a demo of how the Spore API works and uh, quite a few tips on what to do and uh, more importantly what not to do when using the Spore API. I will start uh, the presentation by telling you what the presentation is about and it's not about the Spore API v2 uh, referring to SMS and TMS. This uh, presentation is about the uh, um, presentation of the Spore API version one, which refers to OMS and RMS only. With regard to the Spore API v2, SMS and TMS, this at the moment is in progress. They are uh, both under uh, development uh, and uh, both will be implemented to the FHIR standard, which is completely different from what the Spore API for RMS and OMS is. The Spore API v2 will do have uh, a full uh, authorization over all uh, to when we'll go public. Uh, and at the moment, the SMS access is granted only to the NCA, whereas the TMS access is EMA internal access only. I know that there have been quite a few questions and uh, tickets uh, lately uh, in uh, coming by our services uh, about SMTMS. Um, that's why I wanted to start the presentation with. Uh, making it clear that at the moment, the Spore API v2 for SMS and TMS is not yet uh, fully available and is still under development. In terms of um, requesting access to the Spore API v1 for the OMS and RMS, um, a few important uh, points. First of all, the RMS and OMS dictionary, if you want, they are available in terms of production on the Spore web portal. And this is the, the website that you see here at the top. Uh, the SMS substances can be uh, exported using the same portal um, with a slightly different uh, endpoint. So that would allow you to export the substances. Uh, and in terms of uh, reading documentation uh, available in the Spore portal. There is uh, quite a vast amount of uh, documentation, either business or technical. I highlighted here only uh, some uh, of these documents. Um, there is a list of question and answer, which we added uh, over the course of the last few years. 
um, there is the uh, previous two uh, presentations, the one from um, last year and the one from uh, March uh, this year also in, uh, on the SPOT portal. Um, there is the API general terms of service uh, and terms of use, which I strongly advise you to read because it highlights how to use uh, SPOT API and what is considered to be acceptable use. Uh, and of course, uh, it's also the SPOT API access request form, which you will need to complete in order to gain access to the SPOT API. More about that uh, a bit later. Um, you will need access to the EMA account management portal in order to gain access to SPOR API. Uh, this is the system that provides functionality for the users to manage your accounts, passwords, and access the various EMA applications, including SPOR. For the purpose of SPOR API, you will need access to the uh, UAT environment and to the production environment. And uh, you see here the um, EMA account management portal versions, the one for the test and the one for production. Again, more about this, uh, the workflow and what needs to be done um, on, the, on the next slide. Any questions you might have or issues, um, the services uh, portal is available to, to you and uh, you will need to raise a ticket in order to gain API access. The um, diagram, the uh, the high uh, level diagram to access to uh, Spore API, uh, is shown on on this slide. We will go into the details of every point later. Um, first of all, what you will need to do is to register uh, using the uh, EMA account management portal in production. After which, you will need to register in UAT. You need in the UAT because you will need to compile some uh, test cases. Um, the next step, step three, would require you to complete the SPOR API access request form, the one that you can download it from the uh, SPOR web UI, which I've shown you the link earlier, and is available for everybody to access and download, or you can request it via the uh, service desk. Uh, you will need to complete this form, raise a ticket, uh, and ask for the access to the uh, for uh, API in production. The service test will guide you through the process and tell you what again you will need to complete. Um, and most importantly, you will need to compile a test case evidence for the uh, for getting grant uh, granted access to the for API in production. The test cases need to be compiled while using the UAT environment, and they have to be added to the uh, SPOR API access request form. There is a specific tab, one for RMS, one for OMS, where you need to provide the information that is requested. Uh, we will assess it. The form will be forwarded to me. I will assess the uh, evidence that I see, and based on that, the access is granted into production. In order to <clears throat> gain access to the production environment, first of all, you need to self-register using the uh, EMA account management portal in production. What we advise is that we use uh, the name and uh, surname in a way that would mean uh, it will become something um, that you will understand in terms of how the uh, user uh, name is constructed. So, for instance, the first uh, name can be your company name, the second name can be API. So, the system will construct that um, uh, as a username, and that will, mean, it will be meaningful to both you and uh, to us to understand uh, where it is coming from. You need to provide a unique email address to be used for API. And we strongly advise not to use a person's uh, email address because uh, the email address is unique in our um, account management uh, system. And uh, that person might want to use it later to self-register for the different application. That person will not be allowed if you used already this email address for the API. So please use 
a dedicated email address of the API username. You will need to affiliate yourself to the right organization. Um, if that organization does not exist yet, at the moment we have in the region of 39,000 organizations in, uh, in sport, but they all the organizations that might not exist. Um, so if your organization doesn't exist, you will need to submit a change request in OMS to have the organization created and provide, of course, the evidence of uh, the existence of the organization. Once you are self-registered, you will request, you will need to request an industry user role or uh, NCA uh, user role um, in order to, to have access to the system. And most importantly, the organization must have first registered a super user. This is the standard um, protocol. That was so far for the production. But of course, you need also access to the sport UAP uh, system because this is where you will test uh, the API and how it works. So the registration process that you can conduct will need to be replicated on the UAP uh, environment. However, there are um, there is one difference in the sense that if the organization does not exist. You don't need to submit a change request to have it added. You can pick up any available organization um, because for the purpose of testing, uh, we just simply need to, to see that um, you know how to use the uh, API and how to build um, the, the API call. The organization that you choose will still need to have a super user assigned to it before you can uh, submit an industry uh, user or NCA compliance or NCA user role. Um, there are several points in the, the small print here. Um, first of all is um, even uh, if you are already a registered user, so you have valid user credentials and possibly you don't have an API role. Uh, if you want to use uh, one for your organization, we strongly advise to have a dedicated organization API uh, username. Um, and the um, second point refers to the fact um, that um, for those that use a third party uh, provider. So um, some of you might use, instead of connecting directly to um, Spore API, you might use a third party provider. There are several at the moment. And that third party will provide the software that would allow you to connect to the Spore API. You will still need Spore username to allow you to log in to API and uh, get the information. However, uh, if you do it via third party, you will not need to um, perform the test cases, but what you will need is to provide us with the evidence from the third party provider that the test cases have been executed by them in the past. So it can be either in the form of the uh, Excel spreadsheet that was used uh, by the third party provider or uh, give us a ticket number that uh, was uh, at the time uh, required by the created by the third party provider with uh, within the service desk for uh, FM. The next step in uh, in your uh, process of gaining access to the score API is to complete us, um, the access request for. Uh, this one has several tabs. The first one is um, the one um, that uh, you need to complete and you need to provide the information why you need it and confirm the, the organization name. Uh, and uh, this will need to be completed before submitting the request for access because this has to be assessed by the business. Um, then there are a couple of tabs. Uh, for you to complete. One is the uh, RMS test cases and the other one is the OMS test cases. This can be completed before or even during the request for the Spore API access, but it, they must be completed for access to be granted. Um, there are quite a few of them. Uh, if there are any questions regarding the uh, completion of those uh, lines of um, 
or the testing, um, you can ask within the Kiki that you created, and we will uh, will will help you to understand maybe how to build the, um, the API call or answer any other question you might have. Um, you need then to raise an EMA services request for this for API access and attach the access request form that we talked about earlier. And then you can start com uh, compiling the test case uh, evidence. Um, this is done on the UAP environment uh, and definitely not on production. Do not try to use your production to connect with your uh, UAP or um, because we will need first to confirm that uh, what you call uh, it's uh, actually working as it should and doesn't cause any kind of uh, of issues. This is why we actually need to see uh, that uh, you know how to form the uh, the API calls. So this um, um, there are in the region of uh, forty different uh, test cases that you need to um, provide to to show that you understand how the API call is. Uh, it's uh, it's made, um, and this have to be put in the, in the Excel form in the one of the two uh, the two tabs that we mentioned the RMS cases and the OMS cases. As I mentioned earlier, um, if you connect by a, a third party so like a software provider, you do not need to carry yourself the test cases. However, we need to um, still uh, know uh, which software uh, provider you are using. And uh, we need to provide uh, an evidence of your relationship with uh, such third party provider, maybe a letter from the third party provider confirming that uh, you are a user of their software. Um, once the um, UAP uh, access its um, obtained and you provide all the information that is necessary in the um, request form, uh, this is going to be assessed by EMA, usually by myself. Um, and uh, based on that, we will grant the uh, access to the uh, Spore API in production. Um, please note that uh, within the EMA access management portal, you cannot ask, ask for an API role for Spore. That is based on what I've seen so far in terms of questions from various uh, um, companies. Uh, the SPORE API role is granted specifically once we see the test cases. So you can request in the EMA access management portal an industry role or an NCA role, but then on top of that, the SPORE API role comes. And as I said, this is granted only by providing the evidence uh, together with the request form. Um, just to give you an idea of what is the uh, uh, the main uh, stakeholders, it's uh, you, the industry super user, or the NCA users. Um, if there are any questions, uh, these are uh, raised by the EMA services uh, portal, which uh, we will talk a bit about it uh, in the next slide, because uh, things are slightly changed since uh, um, beginning of uh, September in terms of the software that is used for the EMA services portal. Uh, any tickets that you raise via them, uh, it's uh, assessed or answered either by the support data steward um, or by the technical team if the question uh, is more technical. Uh, since the beginning of September, uh, we uh, changed the application that we use for the um, handling of the service test ticket. The new tool that we use is called ServiceNow, and this is used to record the incident or SIMIC questions, uh, and it's uh, part of our uh, EMA's cloud strategy uh, and security. Um, and uh, Jira um, still not uh, dismantled, so it's still available for the tickets that maybe you have created in the past are still available. It's still visible to us. We can still work on closing those. However, uh, any new tickets uh, will be raised via um, ServiceNow, uh, which um, 
have the processes which are much more suited to the industry best practices and much more user oriented to service. It's easier to create specific workflows in order to handle the requests from you. So overall to get uh, a better experience for you as, uh, as users. Um, you will see this uh, announcement on the Jira, on the, on the service desk uh, portal explaining what you need to do. Uh, you still need to use your uh, EMA credentials to, uh, to log in uh, and uh, raise a request or, or an incident. But the look and feel is completely different. And I will walk you through slowly um, through the, um, how it looks now. So as you remember, uh, before the 12th of September, the service desk was looking as, as you see here in the, in the top left uh, corner. At the moment, looks uh, slightly different um, and uh, in order to um, raise a ticket or a uh, question or, uh, or incident for the, for the sport um, you have to select the applications uh, within the applications sport has a dedicated um, link and within sport there are uh, several um, buttons which would allow you to uh, basically select the kind of service that you want for for sport please note that <clears throat> this will go live for sport that's the one at the bottom the sport api service and the um, report, request sport api service and report an issue with the sport api this will go live this week um, into production so you will be able to to use them once you click on any of the of the two buttons, request for API services or report an issue. Um, it will take you to a form uh, where you can provide all the necessary information. And more importantly for us, would, would um, allow you to select which of the four domains the Sport API request refers to, OMS, PMS, RMS, or SMS, because we need to differentiate between them in order to provide the best uh, the best possible answer to, to you. So um, both um, forms looks slightly different for request a service or report an issue, um, but they are slightly different uh, uh, mand mandatory uh, fields to be completed. So this is how it looks now, the, um, the Spore API uh, uh, request for an uh, issue, uh, or uh, reporting an issue in, in service now, and uh, yeah, welcome to, to use it. I uh, said so it, it will be available uh, from uh, mid uh, this week. Uh, these two buttons at the bottom. Um, gen the generic top eight that you see here um, of Spore that are available already, but uh, we added two specifically for the API in order to better um, separate um, the, the API uh, issue with become. Or, or requests which become a big part of all the score um, services that we offer. As you can see, we uh, answer uh, very fast to the requests from our uh, from our stakeholders, and we plan to do the same with the with the tickets that you you raise via service now. Um, talking about service now, um, we have prepared um, a training um, in in case you want to familiarize yourself and um, have a better understanding how it works. Um, you have here the link uh, where the um, introduction to ServiceNow is available with a specific password, or obviously you can always email the um, ServiceNow at ema.europa.eu with, with any question you have specifically about the usage of the new service desk tool. And that would be the introduction uh, uh, into the SPOR registration and the usage of the new service desk tool. Um, we are moving now into the second part of the um, uh, presentation and it will become slightly more technical now. Um, and um, I will start by uh, going through the um, documents which are available to everybody on the Spor Web UI. The first and most important is actually the Spor API specification document, uh, which describe 
all the general principles and uh, it has a comprehensive list of all available endpoints for RMS and OMS. Um, and uh, it is definitely the recommended entry point for any developer that wants to um, develop an application to connect to the support API. It's a document that it's, uh, has 97 pages. I will um, share that with you. I will present it. If you give me one uh, minute, we can uh, go through and uh, you see what it's about. So this is the document, as you can see here, it has 97 pages. Um, it goes through every single uh, possible um, question you might have. Um, it's technical, as I said, it's uh, written with the uh, idea that the developer will go through that. And you need to share that with your developers in order to, to start um, working on an integration uh, with a Spore API. It explains the XML schemas, how is the versioning. Um, my presentation is a short version of the uh, specification document uh, and more uh, user friendly. This one, as I said, contains a lot of information about what, uh, what needs to be uh, done, uh, various behaviors, and then um, also contains the errors that you might get, um, the main um, um, verbs and uh, keywords of both RMS and OMS API, uh, after which we'll go through the individual endpoints. This is what stands EP, uh, it stands for endpoint, and then it describes how to construct it, and it also contains examples. So this is a very good one for you to understand uh, what uh, how, how to build the API um, calls. Um, you see, at the, at the bottom of each of the um, uh, endpoint, uh, you have an example uh, with how to, to build it. Um, the um, access form that I was talking earlier about um, is uh, in RMS and OMS tabs. Uh, it's built, in fact, uh, by going through each individual endpoint. And for each of them, we would like to see um, the example uh, from you uh, compiled into that file before uh, granting access to the production. Um, I will not go th further through, through the document. As I said, it's, uh, it's a big one. It's 97 pages, but definitely if, uh, if you want to start uh, uh, your process of connecting to the Spore API, uh, this is the entry point. There are um, four, uh, three other uh, important documents um, that I want to mention here. One is the API. Um, um, I see one of the questions uh, to share the link. The link is actually to, to the document, to the Spore API specification is here. Um, uh, I shared it. It's available via the Spore Web UI. Um, and um, you, you can access it without um, a, should, a, any, any problem. Um, I will actually, once I go to the document, I will show you where it is on the Spore Web UI to make it easier for you. Um, the second document I want to mention is the Spore API XSD schema, which describes the data format that the various uh, different payloads must confirm to as an input and output for the, for the endpoint. Um, this, together with the Spore API specification, it's part of the document that a developer needs to go through in order to connect to the Spore API. A third document is the integration patterns, which contains um, an API specification uh, for various scenarios uh, and how to combine the um, several API calls to achieve a specific uh, business uh, scenario. So it's a combination of the API specification and the XSD schema documents to make it easier for you to understand how to use the API. And uh, the fourth one is the sample payloads, which is an um, an extension of the examples from the Spore API specification document. Um, but uh, this has to be re uh, read always in conjunction with the Spore API uh, um, specification. Uh, and the last one, for instance, is the Spore Web UI in itself, um, which is in fact uh, an extension of the API. Um, with um, graphical user interface uh, um, on top. 
and uh, in itself it makes it a, it's a good tool to analyze the uh, payload composition and how to interpret the api call because um, both uh, chrome and edge do have developer tools you press f12 basically once you are in uh, uh, chrome and uh, or on edge and that will open a, a separate window uh, for developer tools and while you browse the web ui you can actually analyze the the api uh, the calls that are made behind for the instructions that you press on the on the web ui um, i will share now the chrome um, spore web ui so you see how it looks and where to find these documents spore web ui which i'm sure you are familiar with uh, if I go, for instance, to organizations, um, I have to log in. Um, and after that, you can uh, browse either organization or referentials um, web pages uh, and then um, find um, uh, the, the, the documents. So if you go here uh, in organizations, you have four tabs one is documents you can uh, view them and that has general and technical um, there are several in the general that i mentioned to you earlier from the um, spore api user ask, uh, question and answer the webinar that uh, we had in the past uh, plus the access request form you can get it from here you can simply go and, and download it and the technical tab contains the documents that uh, I mentioned. Uh, this is the big one, the Spore API specification. And then you have, yes, the XSD schema, the integration patterns, and the sample payloads. So these are available, all of them, into the um, via the Spore uh, web UI. Uh, there are several other, like the logical data model and the conceptual data model for uh, developers that they want to go into a deeper uh, understanding. If I come back to the presentation, let me stop sharing this. There are other API resources on concepts. Uh, um, there are various tools that you want, uh, you might want to use. For instance, uh, Postman, which is a graphical user interface to debug the HTTP calls um, to understand the header and the payload composition of the of the API calls. Um, and uh, another one is the SOAP UI, which is um, a testing frame framework. Uh, and um, with uh, with it, you can um, base it. Uh, you can create automatic testing if you want. Um, all these are based on the experience. We use them in the past. In no way we recommend one or the other, but uh, it's uh, some of the four that can be used to to help you develop the integration with the Spore uh, API. Some details of about the Spore API uh, again V1. Uh, at the moment, the um, basic authentication over HTTPS is the only supported uh, mode currently. The OAuth uh, may be uh, looked at in the in the in the near future. Uh, however, at the moment, it's it's only HTTPS. Uh, while the role-based access uh, authorization it's uh, via your uh, your username on uh, uh, from the EMA account management portal. Um, you might have noticed that uh, all the um, versioning, all the service calls that you make to the API include a version name in the, uh, the version number in the uh, uh, in the endpoint. For instance, V1 for RMS and OMS, and obviously V2 will be for the SMS and PMS. As I mentioned earlier in the beginning, the V1 and V2 are not compatible um, because V2 is fire compatible, whereas V1 is not. Uh, the two of them are not compatible, they are not interchangeable, uh, but we plan to maintain V1 for the foreseeable uh, future. Um, in terms of uh, resources, um, these are the, the it's a, there are a set of verbs that are used by the API, uh, like list terms, organization, documents, locations, and so on. All these are described in the API specification document. Um, and in the XSD schema uh, document. All of them are UTF-8 encoded. Um, resources that we provide can be represented either, um, either um, XML or JSON. 
and of course if you want for file downloads we provide also a zip for instance if you want to export from the uh, let's say uh, the locations or the organizations all of them in one go um, you can you get a zip csv file um, the uh, methods that are used are pretty much the standard the post put get and delete in order to create update retrieve or delete uh, resources um, and uh, the HTTP status codes um, that we use are uh, uh, the fairly standard one for the industry to signal the success. It returns a 200, uh, or if it's a failure, it's a 400 or 500 um, error. The main uh, concepts in uh, RMS OMS are listed on the on the slide. OMS has organization location, a change request, and document whereas RMS has slightly more uh, list term, uh, the translation, that list and the terms can be translated in the various languages, there are change requests, document, uh, and, and so on for, for the RMS, slightly more than uh, on, the, on the OMS side. Oh, again, all of them are detailed in the SPORE API specification uh, document. I will... Um, do in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I will go through the OMS um, to have a short demo to um, explain how the API calls are uh, are made, are composed, and then uh, we'll come back here to to go through the tips because it'll make more sense after you see how the uh, how the calls are uh, are made. I will share now the. Um, already prepared screens. So this is the um, UAT. Um, I, uh, all, all, the, all the demo is based on our UAT environment. Uh, and um, you may be already be familiar, if not, you'll become very familiar <laughs> soon. Um, a simple call, it is looking like this. As I said earlier, use the, it's for, UAT because it's a UAT environment, then it's um, Z1 because the version one, and then you can use the keyword organizations. This one will retrieve um, a summary of all the organizations we currently have in the uh, test system. The number is here, there are 30,866. Um, there are roughly 39,000 in the production, but again, this is a test environment, so they are uh, slightly less. Um, and um, the default page um, that uh, the number of organizations that are provided uh, by the API call uh, when such a call is made, it's 20 per page. This is the page size here. Um, and um, you can alter this if you want. We'll go to that a bit later. The maximum you can go through in case of OMS is 200 organizations per page. Um, and um, for instance, for the ones that want to work with more complex queries, uh, and it can become quite complex, you'll see by the end of the, pres uh, the demo that the, you can build quite complex queries. Um, what the system does is um, provide you with a search token, which is this combination of letters and numbers. Um, and um, in case you want to uh, parse uh, multiple uh, pages, rather than every time call the same complex query, you can simply use a search token instead of the query and uh, the, the same uh, uh, result it's, it's shown. Um, in our case, organizations uh, contain a set, it's a, it's a summary, the organization ID. Um, if there is any code, um, uh, that uh, any mapping that there is, um, the organization, uh, well, map to the type that uh, it is, and and so on, and uh, and so forth, and of course the name. Um, this is the example where I said that um, you can alter the uh, organization, the default uh, page size for organization from twenty to a maximum of two hundred. The number of items obviously doesn't change because we still have the same number of organizations. However, um, and this is. Uh, a tip in in a way um, you can uh, if you want to get um, thousands or all of the organizations rather than 
um, use the default to like 20 or even five uh, per page, you can use 200, which means you place a lot less calls to the uh, to the Spore API uh, and um, save on the load that this, uh, you every for, for for every call because obviously instead of having uh, it comes to about uh, 150 uh, um, individual calls for the page size 200 for a page 20 you have 1500 uh, pages basically returned for for all the organizations so it's an it's a, a full order of magnitude um, if you if you change the page size, um, it will you'll save a lot of the uh, uh, load on the on the server, and that's what we usually we recommend to use the um, uh, a higher page size if uh, if that is possible and you can process that uh, internally. Um, if uh, you want to get the details of a single organizations, the uh, the single organization. Uh, you simply add um, the the org ID, as we call it, um, at at the end of the endpoint, and that would give you the details of uh, each individual um, or uh, organization. Again, um, every organization uh, does have versions, so um, in case uh, there is a change to the to the organization. A new version is created. So an organization like this, um, if I call it originally, uh, as you seen in the previous screen, it gives me always the latest, uh, the latest version. However, if I specify, if I want to see all the versions, obviously you see that there are a lot more uh, with uh, with all the changes that happened in the past for the for the organization. Uh, one piece of advice here is that, and I've seen it um, too often, um, when integration with the Spore API is uh, performed, uh, the default call is organization with all versions. Bear in mind that organization versions change rarely. They do change, but rarely. So um, it's, uh, it's always better to use slightly different uh, approach, like uh, modified on, uh, which we'll see later, which is another keyword, um, which would uh, bring you the, only the ones that have changed. You can specify if, have changed, if it changed or not the organization, rather than calling every single time all the organizations with all the versions. The um, load that is put on the server increases um, a lot in case of uh, this. We have uh, thousands and tens of thousands of uh, users of API, if everybody would do versions through all the time, um, it can uh, impact severely the uh, the server. So you need to um, understand exactly what you want. And if you are always in doubt or you have any question, raise a ticket and we can explain and we can go through all the all the details, how to build uh, the API call better. Another example of um, um, an API call is um, you can search by the organization name. And here the system allows you to use what characters. You can use exact name. You can use what characters at the end or what characters at the beginning. For instance, here I wanted to uh, search for all the organizations that include the name test anywhere within the name of the, of the organization. Uh, and that would bring me 284 organizations with uh, this kind of uh, parameter containing the word test. Um, and you see here, for instance, automatically, if I don't specify the uh, page size uh, equal 20 uh, is the default one, uh, but I can uh, combine the org name test uh, and page size 50 if I want by using the uh, end uh, which would uh, allow you to combine various search parameters into into making the API call. The next example of um, how to use the uh, the API call, it's um, um, if you want, for instance, to uh, specify if I the organizations that are active and inactive. 
Uh, and that's a keyword here, active or inactive, because by default, when you search for an organization, it automatically brings only the active organizations. So uh, if I search here for uh, organization, including a test, it tells me that there are 284. Uh, that means there are 284 active ones. If I specify I want to see also the inactive ones, there are 286, which means two of my organizations that contain the word test are in fact inactive. Um, but uh, by default, the search endpoint, the one that is built using this question mark, will bring only the active organizations and not the inactive ones. So um, I answer many tickets where um, users ask me why they can't see organization X or Y. Um, and uh, that is only because, uh, as I said, the active ones are, uh, are, are abroad. And in order to prove that, for instance, we have um, uh, two uh, inactive. If I specify inactive, if you remember, we had 284 active, 286 active and inactive. We have two which are, in fact, uh, inactive here. Um, going now to the locations endpoint, which is uh, specified by using the keyword locations. Uh, this is built in a very similar way to the organization. Um, you can um, locate uh, specific locations by uh, specifying the location ID if you know it, or if not, and you don't know it, you can always um, search for the for the individual um, locations, knowing, for instance, the name. The name it's uh, the search for the via name is done in the same way as the as for the organizations using question mark and uh, and then the organization name uh, and then you can use wild characters at the beginning at the end or even the the exact uh, names um, one thing that uh, I will mention I will go back to the previous endpoint um, I can instead of uh, specifying an exact location ID you can build it by searching for all location that start with a, a specific um, um, number of, of locations. So that will go into the server and try to find for me the um, uh, locations. Uh, you see, all those that start with these um, numbers, they tell me that there are uh, a lot of these uh, Location, so it it allows you uh, various searches by using the um, wild characters, and so they can be beginning and they can be um, um, also combined with other parameters like active and uh, inactive. In the same way as uh, is for organizations, uh, it's also for locations. By default, the API calls do bring back. Uh, and um, and show you the active locations only. Uh, so if you want also to see the inactive one, you have uh, to specify that by using the keyword inactive. Um, again, um, as I as I've done it before uh, for organizations, we can do it for uh, for locations. You see that. Um, in this search containing the keyword test, uh, we have 376 active and inactive. If I take out and uh, the active and I put only inactive, it gives me that I have 11 locations which are inactive on the on the UAT system. Now um, you can combine. Uh, with uh, various parameters I mentioned to you at the beginning, the queries can be built in a fairly complex way because in this case, I want all the locations uh, where the organization ID starts with this root or dash uh, and then a specific uh, number. I want all the, with the location status active and inactive. Uh, I change the page size uh, because as I said, I don't want only 20, I want 100 and I want to sorted by the organization name. All these um, uh, keywords are explained and um, in the Spore API specification document, I simply use that 
um, and uh, you can build it fairly easy once you go through that document and understand exactly what parameters are, are available to, uh, for you to, to build the API calls. This, for instance, would re return 120 that contain the, um, well, the organization ID starts with 100068 and uh, active or inactive, and uh, I want them uh, sort by organization name. Um, now, the same one that returns for me the 120, um, remember, I haven't specified the uh, versions. I want, uh, by default, this will return only the latest uh, version uh, of each organization, of each location, sorry. Uh, but if I specify versions equal true, uh, that will go and bring back um, every single version of the, uh, of the um, location. This is a much heavier call because um, there are locations with five, 10 uh, versions. You multiply that by the number of items that it returns and suddenly uh, the call can be 10 times um, heavier than the ones with only the, the latest uh, version. Um, and another example, for instance, is here. Um, what I mentioned to you earlier is um, you can use uh, keywords modified after. So for instance, if you want to retrieve um, the locations or similarly the organizations that have uh, been uh, changed since um, a certain date, uh, you can use this keyword log modified after. Um, and that would allow you to, um, uh, first of all, it will be a quicker reply. Second, it will be a much easier call and less load on the server. Um, and um, that would uh, would allow, you know, it's a win-win this one, but um, you need to know the keyword and the parameters that are available to you. So again, that Spore API specification document, it's worth uh, reading and uh, uh, by your developer in order to build the, the correct call that uh, uh, you need. You can uh, automate maybe this and uh, always search for the organization that have been changed in the previous day. Um, and that means that uh, you will not re retrieve um, 65,000 locations every day. You retrieve only the ones that uh, are changing in a day, which are um, a lot, lot less, uh, maybe a hundred uh, times less, or if not, uh, if not more. That would be um, the um, demo about um, OMS uh, API. Um, I'll go now through the um, tips. Uh, which some of them I already mentioned in the in my uh, in my present during the during the demo, but now I um, you'll see them uh, written down. So um, um, as I mentioned, actually during the sport registration slide, um, web UI roles uh, allow you access to web UI. With that, you cannot have access to the API. So um, even if you think that uh, um, okay, I'm already having access to the web UI um, and try to place an API call that will return an error because API role has to be granted specifically by going through the registration uh, process for, for the role. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the maximum number of organizations or locations for OMS API can, uh, that can be returned is 200 on a single page uh, and the default is uh, 20. Um, if you want to uh, retrieve every organization, um, rather than placing individual calls, imagine we have about 39,000 uh, organization in uh, production, um, and uh, place that with a page size of maximum 200, you can use uh, the parameter page size with a value zero. Page size zero uh, will uh, retrieve every single um, organization uh, and uh, that it's um, in fact an easy call uh, for the for the server because it uses um, a file that is generated overnight uh, by the by the server so the, all the organizations and locations are uh, put into a file overnight so they can be exported any given time uh, on the following day 
uh, and this is what page size zero equals zero uh, does uses that uh, already generated file page size e equals zero cannot be used with any other query parameter like searching uh, the only exception being if you want versions true or ver um, or the default which is versions false um, to to be used um, there are still some uh, organizations for which the history does not work uh, properly uh, where the, when you call the versions true returns the latest version but uh, not all of them um, and we work through all of that to um, to, to have them fixed as soon as uh, possible. Uh, one um, uh, point to remember is, um, and that is a bit of a confusion that I've seen in the, um, in the past, um, if a location ID starts with ORQ, do not consider that as a location because ORQ, it's a temporary ID and it means that the location is still provisional. It has not been approved by our data stewards. It might be simply rejected if the um, documentation that it's uh, provided, it's not uh, uh, compliant. So um, it, the, lock, the lock ID has to start with lock dash for it to be an active location. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, we will we move to the uh, RMS. Uh, we will return to the tips. Um, I will uh, now um, show you how the API calls are made um, for the um, API. So uh, RMS. So we we have a bit of a demo. So um, in case of um, RMS, the main um, components are um, lists and, uh, and terms. Um, and uh, for instance, if you want to see, um, we can start by doing the, a very simple call, which is v1 dash uh, slash list. That tells me that there are 156 lists uh, that we currently have in, um, RMS and um, the system uh, will uh, give you the summary of every list in in this call. Uh, you notice here that the page size is uh, by default also 20, the same as for uh, OMS. Um, the only difference is that in case of RMS, the number of terms displayed on an, on a page it's um, a lot higher. It's in fact 1,000 for um, for RMS. Um, and um, yeah, you can specify the page size up to that uh, that value uh, if you if you want. Um, the same uh, search token um, uh, is available. You can move to various pages of a query. Uh, in this case, when I have 156 um, uh, return items, with if I have a page size of 20, that means that I have uh, about eight pages to to go through in order to retrieve all the list uh, with the summaries. Um, if I want to see the summary of a specific list, uh, I construct the API call by simply adding the um, uh, list ID and I pick the first uh, number in the um, in RMS list. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and um, this list, it's uh, the uh, age range. Um, and uh, it, it gives me here the, the summary of the list, if it's current, uh, and um, what type of list is public or uh, or not. Uh, if you want to access the individual terms of the list, this one uh, using terms with no other parameter will retrieve the summary of all the terms in, in a list. So in this case, age uh, range uh, tells me that uh, uh, have the list has 20 uh, items. Uh, and because by default the page size is 20, it means that uh, all these are uh, listed in one single page. Um, there is the option that instead of um, uh, the, the terms to see the term summaries, um, so this is a shorter version of the of the terms. Again, this all these keywords are explained in the 
and I repeat uh, in this um, Spot API specification document, uh, all the options and all the parameters that you can uh, you can use to to build the API. Um, they are in a way built in the same way. You you go through the specific uh, parameters. You can use combinations um, of of parameters for you uh, in order to 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 get the information that. Uh, you want. If I want to see the details of a term, of a specific uh, term, I can go to the list, which I said is a range. I use terms, slash, and then the individual uh, term ID, uh, which in uh, this case, it's a cold young animal. This is what it tells me. Um, and um, and this is, uh, well, it tells me which list it uh, it belongs to. Um, so this is how you access the individual um, terms, but of course you can, in fact, search. And you can search in the RMS API in the same way that you, you search also in the OMS using a, a very similar um, approach. Uh, for instance, I want uh, here to, to see, um, to search for the terms and the keyword, it's, uh, this is the endpoint called search-terms. I put question mark and then I can build my query. Um, I want the name to start with term and I want the list to be uh, this ID, which is actually the age range. And this tells me that I have one single uh, item that um, starts with the name term and that is term newborn infants. Um, so, um, this is just an example. You can build any any similar query uh, by using the keywords. For instance, um, if I want the same list, um, age range, but I want all the terms that contain term, the keyword term, either at the beginning or at the end, uh, instead of uh, one term, I have two because uh, this one is added. It's uh, the preterm newborn because it contains the the word term within the uh, within the name. Um, and if I don't specify a list, um, suddenly I go from two items here in the list age range to 1256 items um, in uh, the entirety of, uh, of the list of, um, of RMS. So, uh, it's uh, you can very easily go from a um, small result and a specific one to very big result if the query is not built the, the proper way. And um, this again can place the um, is that can be the difference between placing a, a massive API call or uh, a much uh, lighter call, which uh, basically reduces the load on the, on the server. Um, Again, the keyword status um, also exists in, uh, in in RMS, and you can see if you want the terms, for instance, uh, that are current. Um, this is what I uh, I specify here, and I want to see all the uh, terms that uh, start with uh, the keyword uh, term and are current. Um, you can choose instead of current um, the ones that are non-current. Again, current, it's a, it's a keyword and it has to be, for instance, uppercase. So again, it's, it's, it's all about reading the, uh, the documents and uh, looking at the details to understand how you, can, you have to properly build the, uh, the API call. Um, in um, RMS, um, I said it, it works in the same way as in um, um, uh, OMS. You can specify the page size, but um, for instance, um, I have here 100, which is um, absolutely fine because I have uh, 1,084 terms, uh, which means that I roughly have about 11 pages. Um, or I can specify, um, instead of 100, I can specify 1,000. So the system will, will um, go and try to put all the 1,000 terms in one single uh, page. Um, so, um, that means I will end up with, uh, with, with two, two pages. Um, it's a slightly, um, heavier call to build a page with 1000 terms, uh, rather than have, uh, in fact, 10 with, um, 
one uh, one hundred. So um, it only has to be the, the the right balance in how you you basically build the the API call. Um, that would be um, the, um, the short demo on the on the RMS. I see that uh, it it took a bit of the of time for the for the API call, um, call to to be returned for for this. Um, and uh, let's say, for instance, now I have one page with lots and lots and lots of uh, of terms. Um, and if I take this specific um, call, that would take me to the remaining um, eighty four. Um, uh, terms that are on um, from from my uh, from my call, one thousand on the first and eighty four on the on the second page, and that is the um, that is my query. I will return now to the presentation to go through the um, uh, a few tips for uh, for RMS. So I will stop sharing the. Uh, um, and I will share my presentation again. Um, as I mentioned in the um, during the the demo, the maximum number of terms that can be returned uh, by an RMS API call uh, it's uh, one thousand, um, and uh, with the default is twenty. Uh, the um, update of terms cannot be done directly through an API call. If you want to update to a term, you actually have to submit a change request, and that is assessed by the data steward and approved or uh, or not. Um, some um, details on the um, possible queries or questions you might have, uh, and that this is one, the first one is the one that came up in several tickets uh, over the past few months, is about the SSL certificates, specifically in the testing environment. Um, you need to be aware that the certificates that we exposed in, in, the, in SPOR uh, UAT are signed by the in, uh, internal EMA certificate authority. Um, and um, if that can be an issue, you need to specify to uh, the tool that you use to connect the SPOR UAT to ignore the client side security warning. Uh, or simply to you you import the um, the certificate um, in your local trust uh, store from from the Spore UAT and use that in order to connect to the Spore UAT. Um, the pagination um, again in order to go through various pages of a result set because um, you can have result set that take uh, set thousands of of users. Uh, and there is a limit how many you can uh, show on, on each page. Uh, it is mandatory to use page, page size, and search token, the one that I mentioned to you um, earlier. This would allow you to move between the pages of the query, to go to the next page, go to the previous page if it's needed. Uh, and yes, you can simply play with uh, with this in order for you to, to understand how, how it works. Uh, please note that um, the search token uh, does have an expired period. Uh, at the moment, it's set to um, six hours. So um, a search token from today uh, will not work tomorrow. So the search token is generated at the time of the API call. You can use it within the next six hours. And after that, um, a new query can be uh, uh, placed and a new search token is, is generated. Um, and um, in terms of the query parameter validation, um, we simply ignore at the moment the query parameters. Um, and this is um, an absolute valid implementation based on the industry standard. Um, and we might look at actually uh, build um, a comprehensive query parameter validation system that would uh, uh, filter and uh, inform of uh, anything wrong. But um, I'll give an example. I see quite often uh, queries constructed with using two slashes instead of one. Uh, the system will simply ignore it rather than provide you with uh, with an error. It will consider it as one and it will uh, it will go uh, through and uh, and provide um, the result. 
Um, a few words on the API uh, and the merge process in uh, OMS, um, because that it's, um, we, we present it in various webinars and explain it, but um, there are still questions uh, that I can see coming uh, about this. Um, um, the main point here is that an organization ID or a location ID that is published by the OMS will be retained for the lifetime of the system, will always point to a single data record. So um, in case, for instance, I have organization A and organization B and we merge them, only one of them survives as a golden record. Uh, and this is the one with the lowest organization ID. Um, all the others that are merged into it will be linked to the golden record, but they will not be inactivated nor deleted. So if you search for organization um, B, that has been merged into A, the system will return to your organization A, which is the surviving one. Um, we might want to, um, we are, I think, in discussions at the moment to, to look at changing the way that uh, um, the merge process is um, it's done in a way that we can specify, instead of being the lowest organization ID, to be the one that we choose. Um, once that is available, we'll, um, we'll, we'll let you know. So for instance, if I now organ uh, merge organization A and organization B, um, as I said, when if I merge uh, A with B and A, let's say the, the lowest org ID, it means that when I search for org organization B, the organization B will work. It doesn't return an error, it, but it will point to organization A uh, and you will see there both of the org uh, uh, IDs. So um, this um, process of um, organization merges applies to the locations too. So to give you an idea, uh, these are two screenshots from an, uh, uh, a test that I've run uh, for, uh, well, in, in the past. Uh, I have organization one, uh, a ending in 491, organization uh, B ending in 492. I merge uh, the one ending in 492 into the 491. And uh, if I search for 492, it will always return to me the uh, both of them. Um, and uh, not, not only one. If I search for 491, it will return the same. This, the fact that I see here two codes tells me that. Um, there was a merge in the past for the for the organizations. Um, this slide uh, that we showed in the previous um, webinars refers to um, how you can build your um, internal systems in order to uh, work around the uh, the specifications that we have in SPORE uh, with regard to the merges um, and. Um, that means that uh, if you want to synchronize to, with OMS, you need to identify which uh, organizations um, has been merged and which one is, is the surviving one. Some, um, you, might, you might choose a completely different approach. This is simply a, a recommendation um, that, uh, that you can use for the um, organizations or for the locations, uh, well, very similar uh, approach. And uh, the same applies to the unmerges, which are uh, do happen from time to time. Um, when you unmerge organization A into two organizations, then um, one will will get a brand new organization ID. And uh, that would be the end of my uh, presentation. I will um, try to see now if there are questions. Uh, so if you bear with me to look at the questions that we might have raised, I'll start with the beginning. I can see a few questions. Um, so if I already am sports super user and I have access to, if I have access to OMS, do I need to know also apply for API access? Well, that depends what you want to use it for. The API access 
and APIs provided for integration systems to system. So if you simply want to, um, uh, if you are a super user and you simply want to browse the Spore Web UI, you can continue to do so without any API access. But it's a manual process for you to, to browse the web UI and get the result that you want. Uh, API, as I said, is provided for integration, for getting results on a um, maybe every day or every week on a scheduled basis. And it's um, your systems connecting directly to, to the system. So super user, again, it's a role for the web UI, whereas API, it's a role for, um, for a system to connect to the Spore uh, API. The next question, um, Spore API access gives you access to OMS and RMS. However, to my knowledge, one can have access via specific AMA roles. No, I think that's a misunderstanding here. Industry user and super users are for web UI. So you go to the web UI and you browse and you search and you can continue to do so. Uh, API, as I said, it's a system connection. So if you want to automate the the connection and the data that is provided and you want to get out of uh, of Spore, you use the API uh, in order to, to connect to, to the system. Uh, and um, it's faster, it can be automated, you don't need to do anything manual via the web UI. So the industry user or super user role, they still exist, nothing will change for that, but those are for web UI. API access is by no means mandatory. Um, and it's again, if you want to automate the extraction of data out of OMS and RMS, this is why we provided the Spore API. Um, Anonymous, you need to raise the CR in service now to create a new organization. Um, I will probably leave my business colleague to answer that. Um, but um, if you want, as far as I know, in order to create a new organization, you, you raise the CR via the uh, Spore Web UI. Are they able to create the CR using uh, the, the Web UI, the portal? Exactly. That's exactly what I what I wrote in, in the answer. But I think it's a it's a relevant question for you to to create um, any new data, either organization or location, in the OMS dictionary. This need to be done through the web UI uh, using the change request functionality. And for this, you don't need the Spore API access. If you have a Spore uh, super user or a Spore user, this will be sufficient for you to create the change requests in the web UI portal. Thank you, Deborah. Um... Can I get a Spore API user on behalf of CRO or this need to be taken for the organization? I'm not sure I understand this. Um, it's um, the Spore API user has to be affiliated to the organization that it belongs to. Um, if you want to submit the test cases and say that test cases are provided in the uh, Spore um, access form, I show you that is available on the web UI to, to Download it. It has three tabs. The one, the first one is with the uh, information of your uh, organization. The second one is RMS test cases. The uh, third one is OMS test cases. So all of that are listed in the, in the in the file. So you can either get get it from the website or ask the service desk. If I may, uh, Adrian, interrupt. I think the question here is uh, how should one act in case. Uh, they are representing a third organization. I think this is what they made a question uh, to have Spore API on behalf of a CRO. <laughs> uh, they they can use any any of the organization uh, details that uh, we they work with, uh, but the organization they use have to exist and they have to have an affiliated uh, Spore API user to that organization because they need to connect. To, to to Spore API. I think so that that is between the third party and the uh, organization that uh, uh, wants to connect to. Thank you. I think that was the one. <laughs> the answer. Okay. 
um, the next one after merge can we submit in the future the old IDs or only the golden one um, I think that might be again for the business um, uh, so after merge can we submit in the future the old IDs or only if we need to update our systems according to the merge so or can we use the old ID without issues in future? So technically, the, technically the old IDs will work to to be accessed yeah. and get data out of them. Only that they will point to the to the golden one, which is the surviving one. So they will always will not will never give you an error. It will simply get give the from an API point of view to give you the 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 data, but of the surviving one. How will this be going to be used by PMS? PMS will need to be able to handle uh, the OMS rules that we have. This is exactly what they do in the square. Yes. Because yes. we ever, not because we have the principle that in OMS nothing is ever deleted. For the reason when we merge, the only thing we do is exactly just like Adrian already described, we create a golden record every time we do a merge. The connection still exists. If you want to query a uh, Spore uh, web UI, you can always do it using an old ID. And what we'll do is the system will retrieve you the result of what is today the golden record. The connection is still there. The only difference is that now the system is showing uh, the golden record, the mastered record. Thank you. Um, next, what is the planned roadmap for the Spore API and several upgrades per year? Um, there are um, changes that uh, do happen and improvements to the API. Some of them are not um, even visible, uh, but none of them are breaking. So we do not have any plan to make a, a breaking change or a change that will require you to modify the IT systems without telling you in uh, well, well in advance. As we said, the Spore API V1, so OMS and RMS Spore API, uh, we plan to keep it for the foreseeable future uh, available. We might want to enhance its security, so uh, move, for instance, from HTTPS authorization to OAuth uh, authorization in the future to comply with the, with the industry standard. But that will be uh, said well, well uh, published in advance if uh, if that will uh, that will happen. You don't really need to. Um, uh, several upgrades per year, uh, well, uh, in an ideal world, yes, but uh, the reality is that um, there are so many systems connected to it, and uh, it, it's a complex system that we use. Um, we There is no plan of several upgrades per, per year. Um, how can I create a new organization, XCD, MPD, and Sport OMS? Uh, I think that's, again, a... Yeah. More of a business question. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the moment, uh, the two systems are not connected. Uh, so what does this mean? It means that if you need to have a certain record in XCVMPD and in SPORE, you need to create them separately. What we are currently developing is a functionality where we will import into OMS the records that are created in XAVMPD. This will facilitate uh, companies' day-to-day uh, -day activities because they will only need to create the record in XAVMPD and automatically we will be importing the data into OMS, we'll master the data and we'll manage to publish the information. But this is not yet implemented and as of today, if you need to have a certain record in XCVMPD and in OMS, you need to create them separately. Thank you. Um, I think this was the last one that has not been answered during the presentation. I can't see anything else. So, um, Miriam, um, I don't want. I don't know if we want to um, 
Do we need to wait more for questions? No, I think there is one more, but I don't think it will be more for Deborah. I will just put it out there and I'll start it and we can maybe answer this one and then we can we can uh, probably uh, finish. So if you if you could if you could uh, see the if you can see the question, it was about the if you can put start again. Okay, yeah, I can see that now it's uh, one more is added. Um, yes, that's the one, the last at the bottom. So if you, Deborah, if you probably can have a look, if you can answer. Uh, the last one. Yes, please. Come in with my question. The about golden. Emerge. Well, uh, that's the thing. Uh, OMS, we manage the organization data. It's, it's up to the PMS group and in this case the PMS, uh, our colleagues, to to be able to implement this so that it does not cause any, any problems in the future to assure that PMS will be able to read these merges that we do in OMS. So as OMS uh, business lead, I'll, I may not be the best person to address this question, but I can assure you that we are working with them uh, to avoid, to prevent any disruptions in the future uh, so that PMS can actually handle the merges and that we're not going to cause any more troubles uh, once uh, the system goes live. Thank you. And I think that was the last one. Yeah, that was the last question. So I think we can give you some time back. <laughs> Thank you very much for attending this present, uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, as I said, we will publish it online uh, on EMA YouTube channel, and uh, it will be probably available approximately in 60 days. Uh, I know there was a lot of questions about the service now. Um, apologies, but we were not able to answer all those questions since we are not the experts. <laughs> but I have provided uh, an email address in the chat. Uh, where you can reach them, my, reach my colleagues if they if you have any issues and you cannot basically reach them via service desk. So there is a uh, email address you can you can send an email with. So it's service now at EMA Europa EU. And uh, thank you very much and have a nice day. <laughs>